the pack, Drew always keeps an open mind about where he goes looking for unlikely gems. Keeping his stock fresh and interesting is the name of the game, and today he's visiting another new and unusual source. The boys are traveling 150 miles northwest to one of Britain's most famous ports. Okay, T, we're in Liverpool today. We're off to Toxteth to meet a guy called Ben who works for Crisis UK. Crisis are the homeless charity. I think homelessness is one of those things which, you know, we can solve in this day and age. And that is the first time I've used in this day and age at my age. Is that this is the start of a... Well, the old man noises started a while back. Is this the start of a pattern now? And do you know what will happen? The next section will be, you'll be start a sentence with, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you something. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to be funny, right, but... <laughs> Liverpool has a long history as one of Britain's most important ports. It expanded rapidly in the 18th century, becoming rich on imports and exports, and profiting from the triangular slave trade with Africa and the Americas. By the time the Albert Dock was built in 1846, an extraordinary 40% of all global trade came through Merseyside. Located in Toxteth, southeast of the city centre, Furniture from Crisis is a not-for-profit social enterprise that supplies restored furniture to Crisis's charity shops in London. It's run by 25-year-old Ben Lunt. Although we're our business, we work to fully raise funds for charity. We restore a range of mid-century and antique pieces that we sell through our shops down in London, as well as online. I've always been interested in design, always interested in fixing things and just having a bit of a fiddle. So I have, guess I have the dream job that I just get to muck about and fix stuff all day whilst trying to do something nice. <laughs> With Drew coming, you know, it'd be lovely for him to drop a fat wad on uh, Crisis, give us a good bit of money, but at the same time, you know, we do try and make ourselves uh, as an authentic antique dealer is what we do, that uh, we don't want to take the mickey, but if he's got any cash, it'd be lovely to have. <laughs> Hello. All right. Hello. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? All right, thanks, all right, all right. Yeah. So, um, thanks for having us. Let's have a look inside. Have a little look, yeah. Bit of restoration going on. That's <laughs> work, know. that, Drew. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. All so, right. yeah, come in, have a little bit of a look around. So, I mean, where does all this stuff come from? We work a little bit differently than other charities because we don't take donations. We work basically on a buy-in basis, so we go to house clearance places, auctions, you name it. This is probably exactly the same places as you do, really. That's, That's completely yeah. different to what I thought it was. Yeah. I just thought people would bowl up here, donate everything to you, and you'd sell it. They've got volunteers coming in here who are learning how to do jobs. And let's be perfectly honest, if you can give somebody a job and say, this is what you can do and make them feel valued and make them feel part of a community and, and, and do good with it, that's a damn good thing to do with yourself. And you're also fixing something up which will go on, have another life and create money. It's a win-win situation for a very, very good cause. Where did you get that? Late George III. English circular tilt top pedestal based dining table, nice. We got that from a dealer that didn't want to fix it at the time. It's got a few little hiccups that we've sorted some, but not all. Mm. And the flip top with it's all still in good nick as well. Have you still got all the brackets underneath still, it? Still, still cracking on. I see, that's really nice. That's lovely, isn't it? This yeah. is a really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a great yeah that's hand. a really, really good, that's better than normal, that one. Yeah. I shouldn't really ask, we don't usually ask, but what, I mean, what do you pay for it? And what are you going to try and get for it? Well, I think we paid just under 200 for it. Yeah. And I'd be looking to sell it for maybe 250 ish OK, you're not making much money there. I know, but I'm trying to be good. I'm trying, yeah, to, no, I'm trying to wheel you in with a bargain. Yeah, no, but that's, that's, that's not a bargain. You're giving it away. I mean, you could get more for that. With all the work done, and you do need to do the work, yes. the top does need refinishing. Yeah. You're looking at a sort of £800 table. Yeah. You know, that's what you should try and get. So even if you lessen your expectations and say 450, you're going to get that, aren't you? Yeah. Interesting. So that, I mean, that's a great chair. I never get tired of buying these chairs, you know? One of the most comfortable chairs you'll ever buy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Aren't they great, yeah. you know? So what, well, I mean, what will you sell that for? About 160. It's a very good price. One of the, the best chairs you can buy for your money is a, is a type that's generically called a smoker's bow. So these were late 18th century, early 19th century, and onwards, they're still being made today, armchairs that you would, in the old days, in the 70s and 80s, every pub was full of them. They're very, very comfortable chairs, and the quality of them is very, very important in your decision to purchase one. 
let's um, let's carry on looking around. Yes. What you're doing is a good thing. So in here, obviously, I mean, it's fairly obvious there's, there's that I want to want to buy. Yep. So nice 1227 model. All correct, all the bits on there. Yeah, you went a bit train spottery there, true. <laughs> yeah, Did so I? 14863. One, it's the, the 1227 the model, but it's yeah. actually about the third or fourth iteration of that model where things did become, uh, they mainly changed the shade, size, and then perforation, type of lip, uh, scale. Uh, yeah, and then obviously the different fixings here, but this is the spring configuration that you would, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one you want to buy. Go into one of the side rooms, and um, right in front of me is an uh, angle poise desk lamp, Herbert Terry. It's not a really early one, but it's not a late one. It's got all the bits you want on it. It's the correct amount of springs on it. It hasn't got any plastic on it. And it's the best colour, in my opinion, black. So is that for sale? It can be for sale, yes. How much would you like for that? Well, how much would you pay for it? Uh, it's not in bad condition. It's got one dent there. I'm scuppered today, aren't I? Because it's charity and I've got to pay more. Than <laughs> <laughs> I've got to pay more. I buy them. I buy rough ones for fifty quid, and we buy nice ones like that. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Oh God, I'm gonna have to pay more than more than I like to now. Mm. Pay as normal. No. No, I can't. You don't I want to go that way. Because then you can come back again and then you pay more. No, I think you're doing a good thing and, I, you know, I want you to carry on. I want you to carry on doing what you're doing. Um, 120? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Is that all right? Yeah. Fantastic. fantastic. Without the dent, 150. You put that dent in it then as well. I did not do that dent. <laughs> yeah. that, I did not. That was in it. 120, no, sold. yeah. These lights, again, it's one of those things that you can put into any interior because they're handy and they look good. They span all sort of areas of design, again, because they just fall into that piece where it's just a good piece of design that looks good, whatever you do with it. But they also go into modern interiors, bedside lamps, offices, hallways. There's nothing you can't do with them, but you want to buy a good one, and there's a big difference between them. I must admit, I'm drawn back to... So that chair, I'd be interested in that chair. Yeah. And these here, tell me about where you got these from. Yes. Because that one's too far gone. Yeah. But where did you get these and have you done your homework on them? They are from the ICI chemical works in Runcorn. Yeah. When they've kind of decommissioned that. That's all I know. It's got a little bit. Have you heard of a guy called Ernest Race? No. You might have something by him there. OK. Or definitely in the manner of as well, because yeah. I had some of these chairs. So that one could be Race. Yeah. OK. You know, it could be. In its heyday in the 1970s, the ICI chemical factory in Runcorn employed 6,000 people, and this chair would probably have been in use at that time. It's made in the style of Ernest Race's BA3 chair, which he designed in 1945, when raw materials like timber needed for furniture manufacture were in short supply. Instead, Race used salvaged metal and fabrics from the RAF including aluminium taken from decommissioned fighter planes and old parachute silk, which he used for upholstery. Ernest Race's BA3 became one of the world's first mass-produced chairs. And this one, in the style of Race, could be worth around £200. It's got all the sort of design cues for that late 50s, early 60s, yeah. English, the round tapering leg. I don't think it's quite got the finesse yeah. of his stuff. But it's got enough about it yeah. to make it interesting. You know. So what would you sell me that today for? If we were to sell it sort of at a retail level, we'd maybe be looking for like 50, 60 quid once it's sorted out. Okay. Nothing not gonna change the world, but it's got a nice look. If it has got a designer, that obviously would impact that. Mm. But if at a trade price instead of 50, 60, it could go 40, 50. Drew and T are visiting Van Lund at the Furniture from Crisis workshop in Liverpool. Hello. All right. Hello. A bit of restoration going on. That's <laughs> work, that, Drew. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. And a mid-century chair in the style of Ernest Race has caught Drew's eye. At a trade price, instead of 50, 60, could go 40, 50. Now I can give you 40 quid for it now. Yeah. That'd You're happy be, with that? That'd be fantastic, take yeah. 40 pounds? Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll Thank take you. that. There's a little tubular steel chair down there, which has got a hint, a hint, just a hint, of a, of a, a very good designer called Ernest Race. He was one of the, the better uh, English designers, one of the first to really get this and then and, and mass produce it correctly with some style. 
this guy did it well, really, really well. And anything by race should be kept for now. It's not worth huge amounts of money, but it's just really good. And there's enough about that chair to buy it, and for £40, we'll give it a go. I think that side's a false draw. Other side's yeah. a real draw. OK. These are bone handles. So where did this come from? We got this from the same guy as your flip-top table over there. Yeah. Um, we've restored the top, not done too much to the rest of the legs and things. Um, had quite a few cup rings on it. It was a bit like the Olympics logo, and <laughs> here we are. Uh, it's nice. It's, it's, you know, it, it's a very simplistic piece of furniture. It's no, never going to be worth a load of money, but it's still nice. Yeah. Still got enough going for it. There is a little drop-leaf table. Not in bad condition at all, and it has remarkably good casters. That's like getting a quite good car and putting very expensive wheels on it. That's what that is. Um, but they are original. So, there's a lot going for that table, an awful lot. I don't think my legs will look that good. <laughs> they don't look that good now. Huh? Okay. Don't, down. Put yourself, yeah, don't put yourself down. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't need to put myself down, that's his job. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get a sander on your legs when yeah. we get back. <laughs> there's a queue for that, don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, so it needs a lock. Yeah. That's all right. A classic piece of English furniture, this space-saving mahogany drop-leaf table with fruit wood banding dates to around 1840. With its built-in drawer and bone handles, it's in good condition and could be worth around £395. So, this table and that chair, if I bought both of those, what could you do? How about... How much did you want for that one? If we say... I think we said 160 before. Yeah. So, if we... Um, I said about... Maybe 150 for that. Look, tell you what, I'll give you that. Fantastic, thank, thank you, you very much. You it's great, cheers. Well, no, it's fine. It's going to a very good cause. I don't want to knock you. Yeah. That's fine. So we do a, a deal on a couple of things, but the table turns out to be 150. That's fine. Once back to our workshop, we'll refinish the top correctly with a nice oil wax finish. What's it worth then? About 380 to 395 all day long. Not a lot of money for a piece of beautiful, classic. They're going to make real profit on the pieces that they sell and teach people stuff along the way. So it's a sort of win-win-win situation. OK, yeah, all sorted. sorted. Uh, ben, thank you very much for today. No worries, thank Superb. you very much. A worthy course, and we're very happy to associate it in some small part. Anyway. Thank you very much. All right, cheers. All right, cheers. All right. Cheers. See you later. Obviously, what we do is slightly different to a lot of other charities, the fact that we buy everything in and teaching skills as well as the social impact, as well as the monetary income that it creates. We're buzzing with the way that it's gone, really enjoyed it, really happy. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I know Drew's going to go and make more money, but that's fantastic. I'd rather sell it today. We've still made money for the charity. That's everything's benefited there. Um, and if he can make some money on the way, that's just the circle of life. There we go. Well, that was good. It was excellent. Enjoyed that. What a, a, a worthy charity, getting people off the streets. It's a good thing. Just to do, to do a good thing must be nice. To do a good thing every day must be nice. Yes, very rewarding for the people who work there. I yeah, think. definitely. Really interesting day. So we didn't buy a lot of things, but what I did buy, easily saleable. Yes. Tables, chairs. If I can't sell them, I might as well pack it in. But, yeah, we'll be back, and Ben's got our number now. So uh, potential for other business. The boy's final and most unusual house call might just be worth its salt. Drew knows from long experience that you never know where you'll come across the next design gem. Only a stone's throw from Conway, they're travelling 25 miles along the North Wales coast to a Welsh salt factory on the Isle of Anglesey. We're off to see Hallen Morn. It's a very modern facility, so they're obviously taking salt out of the the water in the Menai Straits, something that's been done for a couple of hundred years or more. But yeah, I've never been to a salt factory. What sort of antiques would be in a salt factory then? I don't know, but um, we're going to see the guy there who runs the company and he's got some out.
20th century and antique pieces that we sell through our shops down in London, as well as online. I've always been interested in design, always interested in fixing things and just having a bit of a fiddle. So I have, guess I have the dream job that I just get to muck about and fix stuff all day whilst trying to do something nice. <laughs> With Drew coming, you know, it'd be lovely for him to drop a fat wad on uh, Crisis, give us a good bit of money, but at the same time, you know, we do try and make ourselves uh, as an authentic antiques dealer is what we do, that uh, we don't want to take the mickey, but if he's got any cash, it'd be lovely to have. <laughs> Hello. All right. Hello. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? All right, thanks. All right, all right. Yeah. Uh, um, thanks for having us. Let's have a look inside. Let's have a little look, yeah. A bit of restoration going on. That's <laughs> work, know. that, Drew. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. All so, right. yeah, come in, have a little bit of a look around. So, I mean, where does all this stuff come from? We work a little bit differently than other charities because we don't take donations. We work basically on a buy-in basis, so we go to house clearance places, auctions, you name it. This is probably exactly the same places as you do, really. That's, That's completely yeah. different to what I thought it was. Yeah. I just thought people would bowl up here, donate everything to you, and you'd sell it. They've got volunteers coming in here who are learning how to do jobs, and... Let's be perfectly honest, if you can give somebody a job and say, this is what you can do and make them feel valued and make them feel part of a community and, and, and do good with it, that's a damn good thing to do with yourself. And you're also fixing something up which will go on, have another life and create money. It's a win-win situation for a very, very good cause. Where did you get that? Late George III, English circular tilt top pedestal based dining table, nice. We got that from a dealer that didn't want to fix it at the time. It's got a few little hiccups that we've sorted some, but not all. Mm. And the flip top with it's all still in good nick as well. Have you still got all the brackets underneath still, it? Still still cracking on. Let's see, that's really nice. That's lovely, isn't it? This yeah. is a really, yeah. <laughs> great yeah, That's hand. a really, really good, that's better than normal, that one. Yeah. I shouldn't really ask, we don't usually ask, but what, I mean, what do you pay for it? And what are you going to try and get for it? Well, I think we paid just under 200 for it. Yeah. And I'd be looking to sell it for maybe 